Okay, looks like we're going live. And this is the last half of the October 31st Bible study. Sorry, Bible reading in a year with the light Bible study. And I use the YouTube channel to the number two, Be Like Christ, all one word, to Be Like Christ. And I use the, his, uh, I use screenshots from his five minute videos um, to to get my notes we tried watching the videos but that ends up turning it into like an hour-long video which is insane but you can go to his youtube channel and watch them if you want anywho we prayed before the beginning of the first half of this reading so we're good it's 1 30 in the morning i'm ready for bed <laughs> so i'm gonna go ahead and get through this so i can go sleep and, and uh, get up to start this day so we're starting with the insight scripture of Isaiah 43, 1 through 7. Isaiah 43 is a great promise of God's rescue. My mouse right here. I'm having to stand up because my my office chair, my kitties finally broke, which really is from about three uh, three generations of kittens running and jumping and leaping and climbing and and it was never right from when I first got it. It used to pop anytime I moved it. So it was never right from the get-go. And now I can't use it. So I'm having to use a wooden chair from the kitchen set, dining room set. And I tell you, for someone that has no butt, <laughs> it gets a little tiring after a while. So I'm sorry if I'm a little slow with the mouse because I'm having to go back and forth from my computer to the screen I'm reading this from. So that's there's that so not that i now that i've told you a little fyi that you didn't really need to know let's do this isaiah 43 is a great promise of god's rescue and redemption of israel but it must be seen in the context of what precedes it notice isaiah 42 25 so god poured out on them his burning anger the violence of war it enveloped them in flames yet they did not understand it consumed them but they did not take it to heart though god had disciplined his people for their spiritual waywardness his promised rescue is a reminder of his surpassing love for them even though they turned from him like hosea with gomer such a great story hosea 3 1 or the father with the prodigal son luke 15 11 through 32 our heavenly father longs for us to return to him and be restored to right standing with him and this is written by bill crowder Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. I stand at the door and knock. And if a man hear my voice and opens the door, I will enter in and eat with him and him with me. Amen. Oops, 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 oops. I mean, hit twice. Isaiah 43, 1-7, The Redeemer of Israel. I, 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 come on, mouse. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. I hope that the people in Israel right now are remembering this scripture right here even though they have all these different countries coming against them, even the United States is siding with the terrorists and with the Palestinians that are against Israel. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. 
I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. Ezekiel 37. Fulfilled. Reflect and pray. How, how have you messed up? What has God provided for your restoration and redemption? Oh, Father, thank you for never giving up on us. We surrender to you and ask that you please redeem what we have ruined. And this insight story for today is the God who redeems. As part of a sermon illustration, I walked toward the beautiful painting an artist had been creating on the platform and made a dark streak across the middle of it. The congregation gasped in horror. The artist simply stood by and watched as I defaced what she'd created. Then, selecting a new brush, she lovingly transformed the ruined painting into an exquisite work of art. Her restorative work reminds me of the work God can perform in our lives when we've made a mess of them. The prophet Isaiah rebuked the people of Israel for their spiritual blindness and deafness. That's Isaiah 42, verses 18 and 19. But then he proclaimed the hope of God's deliverance and redemption. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you, 43.1. He can do the same for us, even after we've sinned, if we confess our sins and turn to God. He forgives and restores us, verses 5 and 7. See 1 John 1, 9. We can't bring beauty out of the mess, but Jesus can. The good news of the gospel is that he has redeemed us by his blood. The book of Revelation assures us that in the end, Christ will dry our tears, redeem our past, and make all things new. Revelation 21, verses 4 and 5. We have a limited vision of our story, but God, who knows us by name, Isaiah 43, 1, will make our lives more beautiful than we could ever imagine. If you've been redeemed by faith in Jesus, your story, like the painting, has a glorious ending. By Glenn Packiam. Okay, so Exodus 25, verses 1 through 9. God told Moses to take up a voluntary contribution from the people. He was to collect gold, silver, bronze, yarn, linen, goat hair, tan goat skins, acacia wood, oil, spices for incense, and precious stones. These items were to be used to create a tabernacle or a tent where God's presence would dwell among the people. God would show Moses the pattern by which he wanted this sanctuary to be built. Instructions for the Ark of the Covenant. This is verses 10 through 22. Next, Moses was to create an Ark of Acacia wood. It was to be two and a half cubits long, one and a half cubits wide, and one and a half cubits tall. A cubit was roughly 18 inches or 0.46 meters. The entire, so if it was 18 inches, so it was 36, so it was 45 inches long and 27 inches wide and 27 inches tall. Okay, wow, okay. The entire ark was to be covered with gold. The ark was to be carried on poles, which were hung through rings on the ark's four feet. Moses was to build a mercy seat on top of the ark, flanked by two cherubs, heavenly beings, one on each side. The wings of the cherubs were to stretch out over the mercy seat. God would speak with Moses from the mercy seat. The golden table for the bread of the presence, and this is verses 23 through 30. Moses was also told to build a golden table. It was to be 36 inches long, 18 inches wide, and 27, 18, 27, no, 26, okay, 18 and 9. It's 27 inches tall, good Lord. Four rings of gold were to be fastened to the legs of the table so it could be carried with poles. I know it says it was two cubits long, one cubit wide, and one and a half cubits tall. 
but I'm saying it in inches so we can kind of get an idea of the size. But you see it on the screen what it actually says in the Bible. So now I'm not changing the word, I'm not changing anything or taking anything away from the word. I'm just converting it into inches from cubits so that we can kind of get an, a visual of the size of this table. Whoa, so I'm so, so getting tired. Okay. The table would be used to hold the bread of the presence. The golden lampstand, lamb, was that supposed to be lampstand or lampstand? Uh, I think that's supposed to be lampstand, maybe. Verses 31 through 40. The last thing God told Moses to build in Exodus 25 was a lampstand of pure gold. It was to have six branches, three on each side, protruding from the center column, and it was to be decorated with golden flowers. The lampstand held seven lamps, which were designed to light the tabernacle. Okay, so the application for this chapter is, rather than forcing the Israelites to contribute the materials for the tabernacle, God asked them to give voluntarily. Did God need their contributions to accomplish his will? Certainly not. God doesn't need anything, but he gave them an opportunity to be a part of his work. This pattern is repeated in the New Testament scriptures. The apostles collected voluntary donations from those who wanted to help the church spread and care for the needy. God doesn't need our money to advance the gospel and help the needy, but he gives us the privilege of participating. Isn't it incredible that God invites us to help? Like a father that allows his child to help, even though he could have done the job on his own. Okay. Exodus 25, offerings for the sanctuary. sanctuary. <clears throat> then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they may, that they bring me an offering. From everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take an offering. Take my offering. And this is the offering which you shall take from them. Gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen and goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, badger skins and acacia wood, oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and the, for the sweet incense, onyx stones, and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show you. That is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings, just so you shall make it. The Ark of the Testimony. And they shall make an ark of acacia wood. Two and a half cubits shall it be its length, a cubit and a half its width, and a cubit and a half its height. And you shall overlay it with pure gold. Inside and out you shall overlay it. And shall make on it a molding of gold all around. You shall cast four rings of gold for it and put them in its four corners, two rings shall be on one side and two rings on the other side. And you shall make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark that the ark may be carried by them. The poles shall be in the rings of the ark. They shall not be taken from it. And you shall put into the ark the testimony which I will give you. Uh, come on, mouse, now. Serious? I hate you. Okay, see, you see? Um, and I'm using my mouse pad, even. I don't get this. What? Just go. Uh -uh. Now I'm going to move my mouse pad back over to my desk. I have it sitting on top of my printer. Now sit on my desk and watch it all work just fine. That's such crap. <sighs> you shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall it be its length and a cubit and a half its width. And you shall make two cherub, cherubim of gold of hammered work. You shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at one end and the other cherub at the other end. You shall make the cherubim at the two ends of it, of one piece with the mercy seat. And the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and they shall face one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat. 
you shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I will give you and there I will meet with you and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat from between the two cherubim which are on the ark of the testimony about everything which I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel the table for the showbread you shall also make a table of acacia wood two cubits shall be its length a cubit its width and a cubit and a half its length and you shall overlay it with pure gold and make a molding of gold all around. You shall make for it a frame of a hand breadth all around, and you shall make a gold molding for the frame all around. And you shall make for it four rings of gold and put the rings on the four corners that are its four legs. The rings shall be close to the frame as holders for the poles to bear the table. And you shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold, that the table may be carried with them. You shall make its dishes, its pans, its pitchers, and its bowls for pouring. You shall make them of pure gold. And you shall set the showbread on the table before me always. The gold lamp stand. Lamp stand. You shall also make a lamp stand of pure gold. The lamp stand shall be of hammered work. Its shaft, its branches, its bowls, its ornamental knobs, and flowers shall be of one piece. And six branches shall come out of its sides. Three branches of the lampstand out of one side, and three branches of the lampstand out of the other side. Three bowls shall be made like almond blossoms on one branch, with an ornamental knob and a flower, and three bowls made like almond blossoms on the other branch with an ornamental knob and a flower and so for the six branches that come out of the lampstand on the lampstand itself four bowls shall be made like almond blossoms each with its ornamental knob and flower and there shall be a knob under the first two branches of the same a knob under the second two branches of the same and a knob under the third two branches of the same according to the six branches that extend from the lampstand their knobs and their branches shall be of one piece. All of it shall be one hammered piece of pure gold. You shall make seven lamps for it, and they shall arrange its lamps so that they give light in front of it. And its wick trimmers and their trays shall be of pure gold. It shall be made of a talent of pure gold with all these utensils, and see to it that you make them according to the pattern which was shown you on the mountain. Okay, so then uh, we're going to do 26. The curtains and coverings of the tabernacle, 1 through 14. I remember years and years and years ago with Bill Dillard. He's, he's passed away, previous husband. And I remember we used to read every night, and we'd always read from the Old Testament and the New Testament. And this is before we'd ever heard of daily bread. And we'd always read a Proverbs for the day. And I remember reading like the this, like stuff like this, or reading like how to build the, the, the instructions on how to build the ark. And I remember one time I told him, I was like, oh, I'm so tired of reading this. It's just so monotonous. And he got really mad at me because, you know, I was talking about the word of God, but it just seems on and on about these these you know about the 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 length and the width and it has to be made a certain way and with certain things and certain this you know and i just at that time i was still young in my my uh, walk with god and i just didn't understand in the old testament we're not under the law we're in the new testament why do we have to know this stuff anyway you know can't we just read the new testament only but you know i've come a long way since then but he explained to me that it's very important to understand to learn as much about the old testament as we can because by doing so it'll make us understand the new testament easier because at the time when the New Testament was written by the 40 plus authors that wrote the New Testament, they wrote it with the understanding that the first century church had already read the Tanakh. So, you know, they assumed that they had already read all the scriptures that had been written previous in, in what we call the Old Testament. 
Torah, Tanakh, whatever you want to call it, right? All of the above. So that way, Jesus' parables would make sense. But if you hadn't read the Tanakh, then you wouldn't know what he was talking about. So anyway, back to this. So I thought of that whenever I was reading this, and I totally get it now. But at the time, I mean, that really made him mad. But he was a good person. The tabernacle was to be made of tin curtains of blue and purple linen with imagery. He was he was probably the only person, male-wise, I was in a relationship with that was a true spiritual leader when it came to God. I, I could give him that for sure. The tabernacle was to be made of tin curtains of blue and purple linen with imagery of cherubim sewn into them. Each curtain was to be 28 cubits long and 4 cubits wide. A cubit was approximately 18 inches or 0.46 meters. Did we not already read this? Wow. Okay, the curtains were fastened together, 5 in one group and 5 in another group. Moses was told to take make 50 loops on the end of each group of curtains. The loops allowed the curtains to be fastened together using gold clasps. God also told Moses to create 11 curtains of goat's hair to act as a tent over the structure. Each goat hair curtain was to be 30 cubits long and 4 cubits wide. The goat hair curtains were fastened together with bronze clasps. Additionally, the Israelites were told to make a covering of tanned ram's skins and goat skins for the tabernacle. The frames of the tabernacle, verses 15 through 29, in addition to the curtains and coverings, Moses was to build frames to support this tent structure. Each frame was to be 10 cubits long and one and a half cubits wide. There were to be 20 frames for the south side, 20 frames for the north side, and eight frames for the west side, the back side. And, and each frame was to be set on two silver bases. Each side of the tabernacle had Oh, excuse me, five bars made of acacia wood that hung horizontally end to end. The frames and the bars were all to be overlaid with gold. The entrance and interior of the tabernacle, verses 30 through 37. A veil of purple, blue, and scarlet was to be hung in the middle of the tabernacle, creating two rooms, the holy place and the most holy place. The Ark of the Testament Covenant and the Mercy Seat were to be placed in the most interior room, the most holy place. The golden table and the golden lampstand were to be placed in the holy place. A screen of purple, blue, and scarlet yarn and fine twined linen was to be hung across the entrance of the tent using five pillars of acacia wood overlaid with gold. <sighs> Okay, so in the application, it says, does God care about the small details? Yes, or he wouldn't have said them. Uh, this chapter and the following chapters reveals that details matter to God. He wanted everything built according to the pattern he gave to Moses, verse 30. The application for us is that we need to read God's words and God's instructions carefully and make sure we are respecting the details. What was I saying? Huh? <laughs> God didn't write down specific commands for every scenario and circumstance in the Christian life, but where he has specified, we need to pay close attention. Okay, so Exodus 24, Quebec, the tabernacle. Moreover, you shall make the tabernacle with tin curtains of fine woven linen and blue, purple, and scarlet thread. With artistic designs of cherubim, you shall weave them. The length of each curtain shall be 28 cubits, and the width of each curtain, 4 cubits. And every one of the curtains shall have the same measurements. Five curtains shall be coupled to one another, and the other five curtains shall be coupled to one another. And you shall make loops of blue yarn on the edge of the curtain on the selvage of one set, and likewise you shall do on the outer edge of the other curtain of the second set. Fifty loops you shall make in the one curtain, and 50 loops you shall make on the edge of the curtain that is on the end of the second set, that the loops may be clasped to one another. And you shall make 50 clasps of gold and couple the curtains together with the clasp so that it may be one tabernacle. 
You shall also make curtains of goat's hair to be a tent over the tabernacle. You shall make eleven curtains. The length of each curtain shall be thirty cubits, and the width of each curtain four cubits. And the eleven curtains shall all have the same measurements. And you shall couple five curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves. And you shall double over the sixth curtain at the forefront of the tent. You shall make fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in one set, and fifty loops on the edge of the curtain of the second set. And you shall make fifty bronze clasps, put the clasp into the loops, and couple the tent together, and that it may be one. Yeah. The remnant that remains of the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that remains, shall hang over the back of the tabernacle, and a cubit on one side and a cubit on the other side of what remains of the length of the curtain of the tent shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle, on this side and on that side, to cover it. You shall also make a covering of ram skins dyed red for the tent, and a covering of badger skins above that. And for the tabernacle you shall make the boards of acacia wood standing upright. Ten cubits shall be the length of a board, and a cubit and a half shall be the width of each board. Two tenons shall be in each board for binding one to another. Thus you shall make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And you shall make the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side. You shall make forty sockets of silver under the twenty boards, two sockets under each of the boards for its two tenons. And for the second side of the tabernacle, the north side, there shall be twenty boards, and there forty sockets of silver, two sockets under each of the boards. For the far side of the tabernacle, westward, you shall make six boards. And you shall also make two boards for the two back corners of the tabernacle. They shall be coupled together at the bottom, and they shall be coupled together at the top by one ring. Thus it shall be for both of them. They shall be for the two corners. So there shall be eight boards with their sockets of silver, sixteen sockets, two sockets under each of the boards. And you shall make bars of acacia wood, five for the boards on one side of the tabernacle, five bars for the boards on the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars. My mouse just disappeared. Alrighty then. For the boards of the south of the for the side of for the boards of the side of the tabernacle, for the far side westward, the middle bar shall pass through the midst of the boards from end to end. You shall overlay the boards with gold, make the rings of gold as holders for the bars, and overlay the bars with gold. And you shall raise up the tabernacle according to its pattern which you were shown on the mountain. You shall make a veil woven of pur blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen. It shall be woven with an artistic design of cherubim. You shall hang it upon the four pillars of acacia wood, overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be gold upon four sockets of silver. And you shall hang the veil from the clasps. Then you shall bring the Ark of the Testimony in there, behind the veil. The veil shall be a divider for you between the holy place and the most holy. You shall put the mercy seat upon the Ark of the Testimony in the Most Holy. You shall set the table outside the veil and the lampstand across from the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south, and you shall put the table on the north side. You shall make a screen for the door of the tabernacle woven of blue, scarlet, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen made by a weaver, and you shall make for the screen five pillars of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. Their hooks shall be gold, and you shall cast five sockets of bronze for them. Okay, and then our last scripture is Matthew 20, verses 17 through 34. Jesus, a third time, predicts his death and resurrection. Now Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples aside on the road and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and discourage 
and to crucify. And the third day he will rise again. Greatness is serving. Greatness is serving. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. And he said to her, What do you wish? She said to him, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand and the other on your left, in your kingdom. And Jesus answered, But Jesus answered and said, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, We are able. So he said to them, You will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those who, for whom it is prepared by my Father. But, and when the ten heard it, they were greatly displeased with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Two blind men received their sight. Now as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him, and behold, Two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet. But they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. So Jesus stood still and called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. And may God add a blessing in a <laughs> may God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of His word. And I thank you for joining. If you do join, if you do read along, Father, I just ask that you bless those that read your word and that fellowship with you, and that spend time in your word and in praying and talking with you we love you and we praise you in the precious name of jesus i hope you'll have a blessed rest of your day and know that i love you and jesus loves you shalom <laughs>